What's up everybody, how you doing? So I'm gonna answer questions that have been put to me on the YouTubes under my last video. I want your advice, please. I am a self-taught developer with eight years of experience. And now I am thinking of transitioning to AI, not to be an implementer, but a creator of, of, MI, of, of AI, rather. Once said that AI creation is hard, will this movement have a negative impact on my career? I need your advice, please. Well, let me just say a couple of things. My um, understanding of AI is based on my conversations with people who are doing research in AI for some big, huge corporations, on people I know who actually implemented AI in their businesses. Whatever angle you choose to pursue for AI, whether you become an implementer of AI or whether you start developing your own AI, it's all good. Um, you just have to start exploring the field. I think that developers who embrace AI technology, however you may want to approach that, whether you want to start developing your own AI from scratch or just using somebody else's AI like ChatGPT and there are many others out there, it's all good, man. It's all good. You got to feel your way through the process. I think for people who are new to the game of life and business and careers, you have to understand that you can have all these great plans about how you're going to pursue what you're going to pursue. And you should have plans, but you have to think of plans as being uh, a loose plans, meaning what you will often find, especially in this environment, is that your plans will change based on what you discover as you go through the process. So in this, in this example, where this individual who put the question to me wants to become, wants to get into AI creation. That's cool. I said in previous videos, I have to see the context. I said it's, it's more difficult. Well, I think if you wanted to start working on creating models, that's where you have to get into high level math and so forth. And I don't know if that's necessary now. I don't know if you really need to do that. I think there's so much to be done. There's so much opportunity in terms of just understanding the AI, the AI landscape, all the different AIs that are out there, all the different tools, how they can all be implemented. Don't get caught up in that. So I think it's a good idea. Let's, let's look at AI, number one. Number two, let's look at how do a little research. How is it to, what's involved in creating your own AI? You know, and what are the advantages of that? There will be different business opportunities when uh, you approach AI from different points of view. This? I'm on the beach here. I just found this interesting rock. Eh, maybe it's not so interesting. Anyway. I'll just show you what I'm looking at here. Just walking along and you got all these uh, sailboats, which is kind of cool, right? Yeah, so you may, so this individual is saying, hey, I want to get into creating my own AI. That's cool. It's a different challenge, a slightly different challenge than being an implementer. It might be very rewarding. Um, you know what? Let me scratch that. It will be very rewarding. So let's say he goes on, he goes into it and says, I want to create my own AI. In doing that, he's going to become an AI expert. And becoming an AI expert uh, will allow you to see all the potential opportunities with AI. And he may end up having a business or get a job as a high level implementer. So for example, a good friend of mine has a business where he leverages third-party AIs, so he'll leverage ChatGPT and others, and at the same time, he actually has his own AI as well. What people are seeing now, again, not from personal experience, but just discussion with people who are in the game, what I'm seeing is that to get a result, they may have to run uh, data through multiple AIs. As I, I released a video a couple of days ago, uh, just where we were talking just about that. So you may have to take your raw data, send it through AI number one, 
that will process that raw data and, uh, and group it into logical categories and hierarchical, uh, uh, hierarchy being respected and so on. And then you take that data, that, that output from that first AI, and you push that output through a second AI that will then create the narrative. So that second AI will take the output from the first AI and present it in a way that's very readable and understandable for the average non-nerd, and so on and so forth. So there's a lot to do in the space. You can't, this reminds me of the web when it first hit the market in 94 and 95, and really started speeding up in 96. You know, I was deep into that stuff. I wasn't inventing commercial products to, uh, to make development easier. I was just leveraging tool sets and stringing things together. And there was like literally unlimited work in terms of people who jumped on it. There was a lot of traditional programmers at the time, guys doing VB6 and C++ programming and thick client development. So I was one of the early adopters in 94 of the web stuff. First web app I ever put together was a Perl CGI thing. Very simple stuff, but nonetheless, Point being is that by jumping into this technology early on, it, it opened up a lot of opportunities for me. So if you jump into the AI space, whether you create your own AI from scratch, or you leverage other people's AI, or do a combination of the things, it's all good. You may enter the AI space thinking that you're gonna create your own AI and you may end up doing something very different within the AI space. And that is perfectly, that is perfectly reasonable, quite common and okay. Biologists will say, one of the old principles in biology that I heard 8,000 years ago when I was back in college in some course, they said the most adaptable species the most flexible species are the most successful species. So humans, we're the dominant species on the planet, unless the whales are secretly controlling us. You never know, could be, could be. But that aside, we are the most dominant species. And it's not because we're the fastest. It's not because we're the, uh, the strongest. It's not because we outlive other people. The reason, we're dominant because we're the most adaptable, right? And there's even debate that, you know, we're highly intelligent, of course, but it could be that whales are as smart as us or, or even smarter, although who knows. But that being said, the point is, we are so successful as a species because we are adaptable. We can change for our environment. Humans can exist in very hot climates. Humans can exist and thrive in very cold climates, etc., and so on. If you're an adaptable individual who can think freely, willing to change your mind based on the data that comes forth, you do well. So yeah, I highly encourage people to, once you get your fundamentals down in software development, you, you know, however you pursue that. In my program, you're getting a job level skill with about three, 250, 300 hours of work. Once you get past that, then I would be uh, highly considering looking into AI implementations because there's gonna be an avalanche of job opportunities and business opportunities in that space. You don't have to be a coder to leverage AI, especially as a implementer of AI. But if you are a coder, you're going to be far more capable and you're going to be far uh, more valuable, whether you work for somebody or you start your own business. So that's my advice. Look into AI, but be flexible in your approach when approaching AI. Let the market and your personal likes and dislikes uh, help you make the choice about how and you're going to specialize in that field. Let me tell you, if you would have asked me 10 years ago, would I be mentoring people all over the world, 
uh, from total beginners to chief technology officers while walking on the beach uh, in Southern Florida, I would have said you're crazy. All right, that's my seat. I came all this way to sit here. All right, guys, I hope you found this video useful. My name is Steph. Some people call me Uncle Steph. I am the trainer of nerds and other things too. All right, if you have any questions, any comments, any disagreements about this video, let me know. Comment below and I'll be happy to uh, answer. And you're interested in being mentored by me, the big value of my mentoring program, mentoring program slash bootcamp, you have all the training you need code-wise, technical-wise to get your entry-level job. That's the key, by the way. Get that entry-level job. The more valuable aspect of the program really is we have bi-weekly live coaching sessions, which, by the way, was not planned. When I released the program three, four years ago, I didn't start with the whole uh, idea of having uh, the bi-weekly group coaching sessions on Zoom. Yeah, when I started this thing, I had no, I, I didn't think about it. And somebody in the group, in fact, a guy who assists me now in the community, he said, hey, maybe we should have a live Zoom meeting. I said, hey, let's try it out. Cheers, guys.